What is up my friends, it's Manny from Megan Rock Climbing again, welcome back to the channel. As you might have noticed, the recent content showed a lot of outdoor stuff, a lot of nature, a lot of cracks, a lot of camp life. And that's because I was on a trip to the west of Austria, to Tyrol. And to be honest, the weather was not perfect, the conditions were not perfect, especially at the beginning, but it turned out quite nice and I think we made the best out of it. Uh, it's a little bit dim in here, but yeah, it's cloudy outside and it's raining, so not the best lightning conditions as well. Anyway, now that I'm back, the content will focus again more into a gym-based training direction. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Stay tuned. Nevertheless, I wanted to make one more video involving some of the outdoor footage and that's a side-by-side -side comparison between a red point and an on-site go. I made a similar video some time ago showing two of my friends red pointing the same route and there I analyzed different climbing styles, different body shapes, different solutions, different speeds and it was highly appreciated by you so I thought why not make a video with the same climber on the same route but on-site versus red point go. Maybe we can draw some conclusions on what skills are important for a good on-site climber, what things do we have to consider, which climbing styles might be advantages and so on and so forth. So yeah, let's get into it I would say. So I'll start with some general stuff. The route is an 8A called Rain Man. It's slightly overhanging and about 20 meters long. The draws were already on, so that's an important factor which can increase the chance of a successful on-site for obvious reasons. You don't have to carry the draws with you. You don't have to put them into place, which takes up a lot of time and makes you pumped and stuff like that. So that was definitely a factor that motivated me to give it a try, as well as the fact that the route looked quite endurancey, quite homogeneous, so to say, when I inspected it from the ground. And I have the feeling that for me it's easier to onsite these kind of routes than to onsite a route which has an unreadable, super hard boulder problem crux in it, if you know what I mean. So here we already have the first important step before we even give it a go, and that is take a step back and inspect the route properly. Remember, once you're on the route climbing, you have a very narrow view on what's going on actually. And some features might be visible from the ground, but invisible once you're on the route climbing. So that's your first task here. Detect those tricky features which, are, which will be invisible once you're on the route. It might be some footholds or some tricky handholds or stuff like that. Tick marks can be a great help with that. And try to not only focus on handholds, which are mostly represented by the white spots on the wall, try to also focus on the tiny little footholds which may be represented by the black spots. Maybe you can reconstruct some of the moves already in your head before you even give it a go, before you even touch the wall for the first time. Okay, so once that all is done, make sure that you're properly warmed up and give it a go. Alright, so it's me one more time. I had to turn the light on because it's so dark in here. I hope you can see me properly. Yeah. And the cameras are about to start. And we can see some little inspections for the start. And there we go. And the first thing you might notice is that the red point go is so much faster, of course. I already know what to do. I've already got the moves into a mus muscle memory, so I'm a lot faster there. And the uh, left click you see, I right, just clip a little bit, still having a good hold in the left hand and stuff and checking out these first moves and you should know that this route actually has a starting crux so to say so some of the hardest moves of the whole route are actually in the first let's say five meters or so it's a pretty tricky undercling side pull um, boulder in a sense so I'm trying to on-site my way through this thing now and here you can see I'm pretty slow, I'm very slow in comparison to the red point go and why? Because I already violated the first rule. I did not inspect the route properly. Why can I say that now? Because as you can see in front of the route there is this platform like viewing platform in a sense on which you can stand easily and have a perfect view especially in the first five meters. So here it would have been actually pretty easy to get a a pretty good idea of what you have to do in the first five meters in the first crux but I didn't do it properly and that's why I'm fighting my way up here it doesn't look like it and I'm pretty slow but these underclings are actually pretty bad and yeah I don't know what to do 
I'm super slow. As you can see in the in the red point go, I'm already um, past this crux up there. There's quite good rest, not perfect as I knew then, but in the onset go, I believed it's a good rest because it's, the huge white spots were visible and it, it looked like a, pretty much a jug. So that's another point here, if you want to on-site you need to also inspect your route um, and search for rests, you know. Search for huge white spots which may indicate good jugs which you may can also grab if you reach them dynamically, okay. So that you know you can hold this thing, okay, you can jump to this thing and you will hold it. That's another thing that you have to know because when you're in the sense reel then you're gonna hesitate a little bit and you will be unsure ah, is it good enough is it good enough can i jump there if you inspect the route beforehand quite properly you already know this is a rest jug i can jump there and i will hold it so as you can see in the left clip i'm still searching for an adequate rest position because the rest is, is much worse than i expected i also thought okay it's not a big problem if i come through this bolo quite pumped because um, yeah as I said afterwards there will be a huge jug and I can shake the pump off anyways so no problem and also yeah and I got quite disappointed because the rest is much worse than it looks from the ground take a look also now on the red clip uh, on, the, on the right clip where I am in the onside go um, I'm of course much faster in the right clip already and as you can see it continues in this kind of style it's a lot of underclings, a lot of side pulls and especially with the right foot you have to step in a lot of friction footholds a lot of tiny little friction footholds quite inconvenient you know it feels like you're slipping off in every moment and yeah I think now I'm going to start climbing again in the onside go let's see how I managed to do this here we've got these, this side pull rail here, this is actually quite good. I knew that from the ground because yeah, the really big good holds you can see from the ground already. So this clip here is quite convenient. Here I'm searching if this is a nice hole, obviously it's not. And of course I'm much more pumped than I was in the same situation in the, in the red point because I'm just so much slower in the onside. Really pumped here already. Now I'm preparing for a move which I want you to pay attention to. Um, this foothold here that I'm stepping with my right foot it's actually wrong and this move was super hard I was super close to fall here in the left clip okay it's like I was stepping a really bad friction foothold and yeah I just barely managed to hold that move and this is an example where the sand thrill of an onside go may save your onside okay I tried to repeat this move afterwards um, to check the, for checking the route out for my red point go and I could not do it once again simply because I stepped the wrong foothold with the right foot in the right clip in the um, red point go I stepped a different foothold and that's why this crux so to say was not so not so horrible but in the onside go this move was so hard to hold but I managed to do it and why is that simply because Let's watch the let's watch the onside until it's finished and then I'm, I'm going to explain it. Here I'm searching for a foothold with my left again slowly and I just slept off and yeah that was actually quite quite bad luck I would say. I could have managed to do this move as well and then I probably would have fallen in the next crux which was right afterwards. But anyway what I wanted to say before is that sometimes when you're on sighting you're a little bit afraid of falling okay why simply because you did not um, experience the falls of this route before you don't know how they how they will turn out so this implies that you have a slightly higher fear of falling in your on site go than in your red point go because in the red point you already know the falls you know you made at least one fall and that's from your on site go so you're a little bit more experienced here with the falls which results in less fear of falling, which results in less power because anxiety, fear gives you power. And that was an example of that, you know, where I, where I managed to stick that move in this absolute, with this absolutely wrong foothold. You know, that's how you, that's how you have to climb when you want to onside the hard route. You know, you have to go balls to the walls, okay? You have to give it everything. And eventually the fear of falling will help you to stick crazy moves. 
All right, guys, that's basically it for this video. Something that I want to add here is that we've just touched the surface of the very, very deep topic of on-siting, okay? On-siting is extremely complex. It's the, I would say, the, the king discipline of rock climbing. And there are so many factors which you have to consider. And the major key points that I pointed out in this video, to repeat this one more time, first, inspect your route properly before you make it go. Secondly, climb balls to the walls, okay? Give it everything. Make your clips, of course, don't be too risky, but if you're seeing that white spot and you don't know if it's a good hold or a bad hold, simply go for it, okay? Maybe you're lucky and the fear of falling is going to help you to stick that move. And try to keep up with the speed, especially if you're on sighting something that's really hard for you, okay? That's close to your limit. Because it doesn't make much sense to wait so much time on, on these small holes until you finally get the idea of how to solve the next problem, okay? Most of the time you never really have more than, let's say, three options. Most of the time it's two options actually. And at some point, if you're close to your limit, it's better to just in instantly risk one option, you know, and maybe the fear of falling is gonna help you anyways, then waiting too long, getting too pumped and eventually falling off later afterwards, okay? You have to save your energy, especially if you're on sighting on your limit. So try to keep up with the speed, climb aggressively, even if you don't know what the next hole is going to look like. And yeah, that would be my major first three tips for on-site climbing. The topic is really deep, we've just touched the surface, maybe I'm going to make some future videos about it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share comments down below in the comment section and subscribe for more awesome content on vegan rock climbing. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye!